Hands down, the easiest way to control a third-party device through QSYS is by using a plugin. It's designed to control- Hands down, the easiest way to control a third-party device through QSYS is by using a plugin. What are you doing? I'm, I'm teaching the peeps about how to use plugins. You can't just jump in here and take advantage of all the planning and scripting that goes into making one of these things and then just take the credit by doing the easy part. Oh, sure I can. It's kind of like, it's kind of like I'm a plugin. Plugins that are installed on your PC can be found in the plugins category of the schematic library on the right side pane. Plugins exist for a wide variety of devices and new plugins are being developed all the time. The layout and functionality of each plugin will vary, but generally speaking, you'll input the communication details of the device that you want to connect to and boom, you've got control of it. You can add these controls to your schematic or to your UCI just like any other component. And most plugins can expose their control pins to interact with control components within your design. And be sure to keep an eye out for plugins that are QSYS Reflect enabled. Since QSYS Reflect already gives you access to all the devices in your QSYS design, you should use it to monitor your third-party devices as well. QSYS Reflect enabled plugins will have a property called Is Managed. First, let's change this to yes. And then let's give our plugin an appropriate name. When a plugin is managed, it moves straight to your inventory like a VIP at one of those things called clubs I've heard so much about. This will allow it to populate in your Reflect dashboard. If your plugin can't be managed in this way, don't worry. Most plugins should have some sort of status control, which you can expose using the control pins. Then go to your inventory and add a monitoring proxy which is a basic monitoring device for situations like this. Wire your plugin status to the monitoring proxy, and once again, give it an appropriate name. Now, when you access your Reflect dashboard, find the core in question, and you'll see that it's populated with the healthy data from all of its devices, including the plugins and monitoring proxies that you've configured, letting you keep an eye on each one or ignore any problems to your heart's content. So, that's how plugins work, but how do you get them? Welcome to the QSYS library. The QSYS library is an online repository for verified plugins, QSYS style sheets, sample designs, and more. These verified assets go through our rigorous testing and review process. The QSYS library is full of assets that are curated and complementary to the QSYS platform and its products. You can access it by going to library.qsys.com, by going to Tools, Open QSYS Library, or by simply selecting the Stack of Books icon in the top taskbar in QSYS Designer. Now, the first thing that you should do here is be quiet. This library, shh, what's wrong with you? Now, let's take a look. On its landing page, you can see all of the latest featured assets and new releases, but just like a standard library, you can't just go walk in and start taking things. You need a library card. Fortunately, you already have one. Just log in with your regular QSYS single sign-on credentials, the same one that you use for Reflect and communities and training and service, and you'll have full access to the library. The first time you log in, be sure to edit your account profile. Pick a good profile picture. Yes. And appropriate display name as these will be visible if and when you choose to leave a review on any of the assets. In the My Library tab, you'll see a list of all the assets that you previously checked out. We don't have anything yet, so let's start searching for something. Here, we can search for a specific plugin or filter based on what type of asset that you're interested in, select a tag if you're looking for a particular type of device, or a manufacturer name if you know what you're looking for. You can also sort our results and toggle between tile view and list view. You can select the asset or the learn more button, which gets you more detailed information, which may include images, reviews from other users, which may also include yourself, and comments from manufacturers and admins. There may even be a video on an asset with very handsome people and links to the manufacturer or support depending on if these are available. If you want the asset, select check out 
and you'll be notified it's been successfully added to your library. Don't worry. Unlike a standard library, unlimited people can check out the same asset simultaneously. Which means that you don't have to deal with any pesky expiration times or late fees. Well, you could download the asset from the library and place it into your QSIS asset folder on your PC, there is a better way to get into your design. Back in QSIS Designer, you could log in to your QSIS credential via the link in the upper right-hand corner. Once you have logged in, you can go to Tools, Show Asset Installer, or click the Manage button in the Plugin section on the right-hand pane. The Asset Installer window is divided into three tabs. Available Assets show you all the assets that you've checked out of the library that are not installed on your PC. Installed Assets show you everything that you've previously installed on this PC. And Design Assets, which will show you any older plugins that are currently in your design that you have updates available based on the latest version in your library. In each of these pages, you can choose to install, uninstall, or update the asset and you can select multiple assets to perform batch actions. You time-saving genius, you. Once you've installed a plugin into your PC, it will be available in your plugins folder, which you can then drag into your schematic and use. Some of you may be developing your own assets. In that case, you can add those to your library as well. You can select the My Packages tab and add a personal package. You'll need a publicly available NuGet URL to do this. So be sure to check out our documentation on this process if you're not familiar with that. You can share the same link with your friends and family, or let's be realistic, your coworkers. So they'll always have the most up-to-date version of your asset. If you're interested in learning more information about creating plugins, search for the plugin SDK and the other training resources on the training website and on QSIS communities. And that's about it for plugins and the QSIS library. Nate, you wanna take us away? Yeah, sure thing. So. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. What is this? Oh, this? Why, this is my publicly available NuGet package. No. Listen, I know it's illegal, but I'm hoping they'll send me free candy. No, oh, I'll take the rest of this. As we were saying, thanks so much for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time. It belongs in the museum. Welcome to the CUSIS Library.